So, uh, folks, how many of you are familiar with eBPF here? Okay, wonderful, wonderful. About half of you. That's uh, uh, that's great. Well. Uh, before we get to that, uh, let me say a few words about myself to manage your expectations. So, I'm a performance geek who turned to be CEO. So now I had to uh, work more, I would guess, on a company performance than assistant performance. But you know what? I still keep my uh, passion, and that's why I go and talk on the uh, a lot of technical conference still. In this presentation, we we'll look into eBPF uh, overview. Uh, and uh, how it works uh, on Linux, uh, as well as look at the practical examples of EBPF-based uh, uh, tools, which I hope you uh, find helpful and be able to apply to in your environments. So EBPF uh, history and its support in uh, Linux. EBPF, it stands for Extended Berkeley Packet Filter, right? Which is a weird name for a tool we want to use for monitoring, isn't it? Well, and the reality is uh, that uh, is originated from the Berkeley packet filter, which was uh, uh, exactly designed uh, for efficient uh, to build an efficient virtual machine for uh, for packet filter, right? And then extended E, right? That means it was uh, pretty much extended uh, to uh, to to be able to more to be more stuff, right? So Linux. Kernel has support for that uh, virtual machine called uh, eBPF. In general, eBPF uh, is event processing framework, which is uh, used a lot uh, uh, for monitoring, but that also can be used for some uh, some other stuff. Indeed, in the uh, in the net uh, network stack. Uh, in uh, modern versions, we have uh, the uh, JIT compiler, right, which uh, compiles those programs for uh, higher efficiency. EBPF in Linux was uh, 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 appeared first in 2014, right? So it has been uh, out there for quite a while, but it is still been very actively improved. And in the recent years, it's also been integrated in the pair of tooling, right? Which is this uh, wonderful framework for uh, interactive performance analysis in uh, Linux. Uh, if you look at, uh, at uh, the improvements in recent kernels, you can see the list of changes in large and pretty much every uh, uh, major uh, you know, minor kernel release right, uh, does uh, include some uh, additional features in uh, EBPF uh, which can range from the new instrumentation points to the uh, various new uh, you know, types, right? Uh, what kind of data structures we can use, how we can process and aggregate those, uh, those events. So as I mentioned, what EBPF is, is uh, this kind of a special bytecode, like a small program, which you can go ahead and insert in the kernel, and which would be executed when uh, different events uh, are being, uh, being triggered. Uh, what is great about the EBPF is what there is uh, uh, a checks done before those programs are included. included. So it's not impossible, but it is the hard to screw yourself up, right? So it is hard to write an eBPF program, right? The, the basic mistake when you boom, try to insert it in the uh, trace point and your system completely crashes, right? For example, if you just put the, like a tight loop in eBPF program, it wouldn't be, uh, the, uh, would not pass a validation and it would not be, uh, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't include. Uh, right now, uh, uh, even though the EBPF itself is based on a bytecode, the LLVM CLANG can compile uh, the, the programs into that uh, in the EBPF bytecode, and that is what typically used for as a part of an EBPF uh, platform. Now, what is interesting in this case is what that compilation is uh, uh, tend to be mm, uh, to be kernel dependent, right? And that is why you uh, uh, the installation of uh, EBPF is uh, uh, a little bit uh, more involved, right, in, in uh, a, lot of a lot of cases. But for the good stuff uh, with uh, LLVM is that means few of us would actually run, need to run eBPF uh, programs directly. Here is, uh, if you're curious, uh, eBPF code example, which actually comes from a TCP dump, which is another tool which uses e e uh, eBPF, uh, right, for 
uh, for packet filtering, and it has a neat tool where you can actually dump their uh, eBPF programs in uh, what uh, looks like the uh, assembly-like code, right, for the bytecode it represents. Okay. EVPF has, uh, has support both on the kernel side and on the user side. And in this case, uh, I have an image from a wonderful, wonderful resource of Brandon Gregg. If you are uh, interested in uh, EVPF on Linux and using that and tools, Brandon Gregg website has absolutely fantastic, uh, fantastic resource. But that, I think, is a very nice, uh, uh, nice illustration out there. What we can see is one way driver we will have a user program to generate byte code, which will be verified by the kernel, right? Uh, through BPF, it can connect to the different interfaces in kernels, right? From K probes, U probe, trapes point, perf events. And then what the map is, is what that kind of data structure which can be used to accumulate the performance statistics, right? That probe will run, accumulate data in this case, and then we can uh, use, again, in the user space, some program to read that data in the map, in this, uh, display that, as you will actually see in the tools I'll show you. This is another wonderful image, which shows you all, all kind of a different tools which can be used to troubleshoot or analyze different Linux kernels of system. And you can see that the eBPF ecosystem is large and there are already many tools which use eBPF so you don't have to write your own probes, right? Uh, here is another you know, a wonderful uh, image from the same source which uh, really shows us uh, in a different illustration what Linux kernel versions support uh, what kind of uh, eBPF uh, features. And I'm not spending a lot of time uh, on that because I think these things are self-explanatory and you can research them later on on the slides. Here is uh, also from the Brandon's uh, Greg of uh, uh, interesting uh, I get a, f a picture which shows the different tools, right? It shows by how easy it is to use, right, to, to how, uh, how mature it is. Uh, and uh, you can see what there have been a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of tools like raw BPF, for example, was pretty mature, but that's very uh, brutal to use. And that's nice to use what we have in the tools. Uh, in this kind of corner, which become both uh, easy to use powerful and mature, right? So EBPF, I think, uh, is now at, at a very great time in uh, Linux kernel that is a very powerful, but at the same time, very mature to use. Okay. Now, one thing I see from uh, looking at EBPF tools is not all of them are available in the single package. The first the two packages which you may uh, want to look at would be perf tools unstable, right? Well, in unstable version, there are more stuff. Uh, right, uh, uh, for you to use. And then there is also this IUVisor project, which has a tools like BCC and uh, PLI, which can be used for uh, a lot of other kind of simple shell scripts and otherwise to provide those. So these are both uh, pretty mature tools. Uh, you can get them to, um, uh, to installed uh, to relatively, uh, relatively easily, right, uh, in this case that's uh, just example, you have a repository which has a packages which makes it relatively uh, not too painful. Now, I mentioned already, right, what eBPF depends on the kernel. That is why you can see uh, it has to pull in the kernel he headers, right, to understand exactly the data structures you're working in, what, what exactly different offsets for different data, uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, let's now look at some uh, tools uh, in actions which are based on eBPF. The first one is uh, Profiler, right? Uh, what uh, Profile, and that's the name of a tool, allows us to trace the, uh, the given program and uh, look at this, uh, where different uh, uh, threads are in the stack. This is different, for example, from Perf, because the, uh, tool, uh, tools like Perf, they typically show you CPU usage, in this case, you will see where threads are getting stuck, where that is uh, doing some CPU compute, where we are stuck waiting on Vuchix, waiting on disk I.O. or whatever, which can be very helpful to understand, uh, okay, what exactly is going on uh, uh, in the program, right? Why it's not running so fast. Another cool tool is understanding your I.O. latency, right? Especially with modern storage in the cloud and so on and so forth. 
you often have to deal uh, not with the averages, uh, but with the outliers. And uh, this uh, tool pretty much allows us to uh, understand uh, the latency of your, uh, of your vlog device, right? Uh, where, uh, in this case, uh, it's kind of quite natural, right? We're not having a lot of outliers, but, but this is actually interesting, right? We can see for this vlog device, we had like one of the IO requests, which took, uh, what is it? Uh, I think that's, um, you know, microseconds, right? So that took uh, two seconds, right, or something to complete, which is uh, if you, for example, run in the database server and that happens to be something like your log flush request, then it's bad, right? It will have a very bad uh, impact out there. Uh, another, uh, th which is a very uh, nice tool, which allows us to snoop the blog device uh, I.O. Right, so if you ever wondered whether the, your I.O. is sequential or if that's uh, kind of uh, random uh, and what's not, uh, you can uh, uh, rather easy to, uh, to trace that uh, with a tool, right, and then you can run some, I don't know, uh, some program easily, right, to analyze, plot, uh, visualize your I.O. pattern in more details. This is the block device. There are also tools to provide you the same information for, uh, for file systems. And there are different tools for, uh, this is for ext4, right? We can see how much file system main operations like read, write, fsync uh, take. Uh, because again, for all kind of different storage reasons as well as internal kernel reasons, uh, we may see uh, uh, file systems causing stalls which can uh, impact uh, their uh, the operations, right, of uh, our, pro uh, our programs, right, in which uh, uh, may, be, uh, may be hard to troubleshoot otherwise, right, because you probably do not instrument every single I.O. operation in your program. Uh, there is other uh, the tool which is uh, related to that, right, and uh, if you do not want to tra trace everything or build a, a histogram, you can also use uh, this tool to understand what kind of I.O. operations do not meet your let's call it service level objective, right? So in this case, we can say, hey, uh, what are your operations took more than 10 milliseconds, right? Then you can put obviously any number you want out there and that tells, well, you know what? There have been uh, uh, to those, uh, these are uh, these requests uh, which mm, have uh, 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 taken so much time. Now, uh, another mm, uh, interesting uh, statistics. Right, uh, for me, I was always uh, wondering, right, well, uh, Linux has uh, uh, disk cache, right? But how efficient that is, really, right? How do I really see, do I have a lot of hits, right? If I have uh, more memory in the cache, is it really getting more hits or, or less? Uh, well, with, B, with uh, eBPF, you can do that, right? There is a cache uh, start tool which shows me how many total requests have been uh, written from a cache, right? How many hits, misses, how many blocks has been dotted, uh, right? Uh, and, uh, and so on, right? And that really can help you to, uh, to understand your, uh, uh, your, uh, your, cache, uh, your cache performance. Another interesting um, thing. So uh, if you look at your applications, uh, which are uh, CPU, uh, CPU uh, bound, right? One of the uh, critical items in terms of where they would be responsive and perform well is when the application is ready to run, how long does it take kernel to find the CPU to actually schedule it on, right? Because if all the CPUs are busy, uh, then if you'll have to wait until, you know, uh, the, uh, the, until other CPU becomes uh, available, right, or preempted and so on and so forth. This tool allows uh, uh, you to actually see that from a run, uh, run queue uh, delay profile and you can see how long it takes before the program were, became uh, ready to run to uh, its uh, scheduled, which is, I think, a very cool way to understand where you're having a CPU saturation, right? It's you know, much better than just uh, looking at your CPU usage averages, right? Okay, the next one. Uh, if you ever wondered for your program, right, which you have uh, maybe not in the shell, but in some more complicated uh, languages, what other tools and other stuff it executes, right? Well, there is this wonderful tool called ExecSnoop, where you can uh, look wherever for a whole system 
or for a specific program, what are different programs are being uh, being started, right? And that can uh, can help you to uh, you know uh, understand uh, what the program does better, or if uh, there are some you know problem, something fails, you can often uh, figure that out, right? Uh, uh, from mm, from this no in this tool. Uh, the next one is open files. That I think is another uh, also very helpful thing. I find that helpful when programs do not have a diagnostic error messages set very well. It says, oh, there is an IO error or can't find a file. What file? Right? I mean, some Linux programs are getting the error messages which are as bad as the Windows errors. Uh, right, <laughs> so uh, that uh, allows you to uh, uh, to deal with those programs because you can understand what files the programs are accessing, right? And uh, from that you can often uh, infer what could possibly go wrong and troubleshoot that, right? Uh, besides files, you can also trace uh, uh, what the programs uh, connect to in your system, right? This allows us to help to trace the TCP connections where uh, outgoing TCP connections in, uh, in your system, which is, again is, uh, can be very helpful to understand uh, how, uh, how, programs, uh, how programs work and troubleshoot them uh, as needed. Uh, this one I find a very cool one. Right? So uh, in many cases, what we, uh, we see with database troubleshooting, right? for example, somebody complains, hey, the query is slow. But the query should not be slow, right? Because um, you know, the, the, if you look at the logs at the, let's say, MySQL side, and it's uh, all fast application, sees it's slow, right? Possibly that was communicated because of some network issues, right? In a lot of the modern networks, uh, uh, the latency would see uh, is being uh, quite good. But if you have some packet being dropped and retransmit happen, then that can uh, introduce a huge delays before. Uh, the, uh, in that network communication. The first tool, you can actually see uh, what exactly um, network retransmits happen, not just in aggregates, which you can get from NetStuff, but for specific connections. And then for those specific connections, I can also understand uh, what, uh, uh, what program, right, application, if a user was, uh, or was involved out there. Uh, the next one. Uh, DNS lookup, uh, that is a, a, a latency measurement, also sometimes not uh, easy to figure out, but, and I think it's often misunderstood, uh, uh, not taken account, but DNS lookup may be a huge performance impact for you connecting to the servers. Here are all the tools uh, which are available in the version of BCC I used, and those tools are constantly being uh, developed and uh, extended. Moving on, uh, uh, for uh, PLI, PLI, that is an, another tool which is a, a wonderful to, uh, uh, to get some additional scripting if you want, besides running custom tools, right? For, for example, you can uh, run this kind of simple probe which can say, hey, I'm connecting to this uh, kernel syscall and give me uh, the, you know, the, the histogram of uh, the return values, right? Relatively simple gives us a, a beautiful chart. That is example of a PLI uh, language, right? It uses a custom language, but uh, you know, if you do been uh, doing the programming, that is a not too hard uh, language to learn and uh, understand. Okay, the, uh, this is all the tools I showed you, which are based on kind of real time troubleshooting analysis, which is wonderful, but what if you want to have uh, some stats you want to analyze in the past? Yes, and there is a tool for that. Uh, 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 which the state of uh, art, I believe, in this case is Cloudflare's eBPF uh, uh, exporter, which is, uh, as the name says, exporter for Prometheus. So you can get pretty much any data from eBPF in a Prometheus, which you can do uh, wherever. With. You can plot it, you can use an alert manager, and do all the uh, other good stuff. Now, um, uh, here is a nice uh, uh, graph uh, in this case, which uh, I took from, uh, from a Cloudflare layer stock, which tells us what, uh, while all of those things, uh, they, uh, they have the same average uh, uh, value, right, uh, on both axes, 
these are completely different, uh, uh, different pictures, uh, right? If you ever, uh, haven't seen uh, that image, I think that's kind of a, uh, quite cool, right? That is why we need to go beyond, uh, beyond the averages, right? And even the mean value is, uh, and to really understand the, uh, uh, the histogram. So if you look at uh, EPF Explorer, it uses BCC uh, library, right, to, to get uh, uh, the data. And pretty much you can take the data from BCC programs uh, and output that in a Prometheus format. Uh, one thing you have to be careful running uh, Explorer uh, in a production is uh, the overhead, right? So if you put, for example, a very complex probe, and if you uh, put that on a very uh, common operations right, which you run in millions of times a second, you can have quite an overhead, right? As you can see, uh, closed layer guys measure that can be way over 100%. So be careful what you run in production versus what you run in a test or you only enable when a system uh, uh, is not healthy. So for UPF Explorer, there are binaries available, right? You can uh, uh, get that uh, and uh, also provide the uh, configuration. Uh, information. Uh, you can plug it in in a standard, uh, a standard uh, Prometheus, of course. Uh, I also show you how to integrate that with uh, our open source monitoring tool called uh, PMM, where you can uh, pretty much uh, add it as an, uh, as an external, po uh, external, po uh, external exporter. And uh, what you can get in this case here as example is a uh, IO latency histogram. Just the same as I uh, showed you uh, uh, early on uh, in the presentation, which we can uh, then uh, go ahead and uh, sh uh, and plot as a uh, IO histogram over time, right, uh, uh, to visualize that in Grafana. And that can be used for us, for example, to uh, help us to understand the uh, outliers. Like, well, you know what, in this case we had, uh, uh, you know, some uh, requests which have been taken more than 33 millisecond, which is kind of slow for this uh, SSD storage in the, this day and age. Okay, so what's coming in a BPF? What I'm very excited in uh, BPF is, is BPF uh, trace, which is kind of in this style, is uh, my very featureful D-trace replacement. Uh, right, uh, uh, right now it is uh, quite, uh, uh, it is not, you know, quite, uh, mature yet in terms of having the packages available, but it is uh, uh, really uh, getting there, and I would say that uh, probably would be one of uh, uh, the very powerful uh, eBPF tools in the next year or two. Uh, here is, uh, for a uh, reading list, right, as I prepared, I went through a lot of articles. I thought I will just leave it on the slide, and uh, that's it. I think I have exactly a minute and a half for questions. Please remain seated. Uh, do we have any questions? Any questions? Any questions? That was so unclear, no questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, so, so the new tools appear, and they're like D trace, F trace, LTNG, tons of that, 15. Yes. Which ones are likely to go away? Maybe you have compared them. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, that is a good, uh, a good question, right? I mean, uh, somebody before us talked saying, hey, Peter, why don't you talk about a D trace and Linux, right? And I say, well, D trace was wonderful, but it's kind of dead. Uh, right, I mean, uh, it's, uh, D-Trace is uh, available, for example, in uh, Oracle Linux, but how many of you here are running Oracle Linux? To prove a point, right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, the, in this case, uh, I, I believe what the uh, eBPF uh, at this point is the leading uh, monitor uh, trace and instrumentation framework for Linux for this kind of advanced instrumentation use case, which uh, is uh, uh, is uh, there to stay, uh, stay, right? And I think that uh, uh, is uh, uh, where the future is. Make sense? 
Um, I have a question, which is um, a lot of these tools seem very, very useful to run in production systems because that's where you find the really weird problems that you cannot debug and uh -huh. reproduce anywhere. But the question is, uh, I always see these, app, these things running as root and being uh, advertised as unstable, so is there a better way for me to not be running things that are uh, marked as unstable under root on my production system? Oh, well, uh, uh, if you, uh, well, there are many ways, right? But I mean, uh, in the end, if you are uh, inserting some, you know, custom code uh, into a kernel, right, you are uh, doing something uh, relatively dangerous. And uh, as I mentioned, with the performance overhead at least, right, uh, while EVPF is designed to avoid you crashing the kernel, you can make it run multiple times slower. Right, in this case. So in this case, that is advanced monitoring tools, right, which have to be done. Now, what I would imagine in this case, right, if you want your developers to do, then uh, build the safe tools, right, and let them only to, to run those from sudo, right, or something for that particular use cases which you are authorized. That's what I would think. Um, you have presented a couple of tools which are quite similar in the... Um, in the target that they can do uh, with the S trace, for instance. So, how do they compare to S trace, and do you think S trace should be rewritten in order to leverage eBPF capabilities? Uh, the great question is how is that uh, uh, is that compares to S trace, right? The overhead, eBPF has uh, you know orders of magnitude lower overhead than what the S trace does. So, should we write, uh, so should we rewrite S trace to leverage eBPF? Uh, well, uh, the, you know, uh, possibly, right? I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe there is uh, actually work like to uh, uh, to do uh, to do that uh, to do that already, right? But uh, but in general, for the tools, right, the overhead I think is a, uh, right now is a main uh, is a main difference uh, with uh, to what you can do with S-trace. Any more questions? Oh, you're getting your exercise here, right? Yeah. Up and down, up and down. <laughs> it's good for me. Yeah, uh, yeah you can. You next? Uh, no, no. Uh, okay. So, yeah. all, all the way up. Oh, you had the... So we, we actually took histogram data of the audio coming off the microphone. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, so my, my question is to the audience and to the speaker. Um, is anybody using this in production now? The exporter. No. Okay. Yeah, Cloudflare has an exporter, right? I mean, uh, there is, uh, if you uh, l look at, uh, uh, there is a lot of people writing about using that in production, right? I know that uh, Brandon Gregg uh, uses that very actively at Netflix, uh, right? But he's, he's using the tools individually at runtime, not the exporter. Not yeah. exporter. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. running the exporter in oh, production. Oh, you're now. asking about the exporter. That's yeah. Uh, yeah, that so. is a good. Uh, so good I point. would have raised my hand to my own question. So, but I was just wondering if anybody else. Oh, y you use exporter yes. in production? Yes, oh. and it's not 23% slower. I've benchmarked it as well. It's it's pretty close. Yeah, it's, yeah, what, it's what worth I'm trying. Saying, yeah, what I'm saying again is you you have to be smart what probe you set up, right? You can set up a probe to fuck yourself up, right? As with many other stuff in thinking's life. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. <laughs>